This video is about the second derivatives test for functions of two variables. The second derivatives test helps us predict where a function has local maximum points, local minimum points, and saddle points. In Calculus 1, we had a second derivative test for functions of one variable. Suppose we have a function f of x, and its second derivative is continuous in an open interval around the x value of a. Suppose also that f prime of a is zero, in other words, a is a critical number. Then, if the second derivative at a is positive, f has a local minimum at a. It's concave up. If f double prime is less than zero, then f has a local max at a. It's concave down. The second derivatives test for functions of two variables is somewhat analogous, but instead of relying only on a single second derivative, we now have several second derivatives to consider. We have f sub xx, f sub yy, f sub xy, and f sub yx. We'll need to refer to an expression involving all of these second derivatives called the discriminant. The discriminant at a point a, b is given by the determinant of the expression f sub xx, f sub xy, f sub yx, f sub yy, all evaluated at the point a, b. In other words, that's f sub xx, f sub yy, minus f sub yx, f sub xy, evaluated at a, b. In most situations, this can be rewritten as f sub xx, f sub yy, minus f sub xy squared, since f sub yx is the same thing as f sub xy, as long as these partial derivatives are continuous near the point AB. Now I can state the second derivatives test. Suppose that the second partial derivatives of f exist and are continuous in a disk around the point AB. Suppose also that the first partials, f sub x and f sub y, are zero at the point AB. So we know that AB is a critical point. If the discriminant is positive and the second partial f sub xx is also positive, then f has a local min at the point AB. If the discriminant at AB is positive, but f sub xx is less than zero, then f has a local max at the point AB. If the discriminant is negative, then f has a saddle at AB. And if the discriminant is zero, then the second derivatives test is inconclusive. The function could have a local minimum or a local maximum or a saddle or none of these features. Although I won't prove the second derivatives test in this video, I do want to talk for a minute about why it's plausible. First of all, suppose that the discriminant is positive and f sub xx is greater than zero. You might ask, what's special about f sub xx? Why not f sub yy? Well, if you look at this expression, if f sub xx is positive and the whole discriminant is positive, then f sub yy will have to be positive also, since otherwise, will end up with a negative discriminant. f sub xx being positive is like saying our function is concave up as we go in the x direction. And f sub yy being positive is like saying it's concave up when we go in the y direction. So it's plausible that our function is concave up in every direction and has a local minimum. If we look at the second case, the discriminant is positive and f sub xx is negative, then f sub yy will have to be negative also in order for the whole discriminant to be positive. So f sub xx being negative is like saying we're concave down as we go in the x direction, and f sub yy being negative is like saying we're concave down in the y direction. It's plausible that we're concave down in every direction and have a local max. The discriminant being negative doesn't guarantee that f sub xx and f sub yy will have opposite signs. But in the case that they do, at least, it makes sense that we'll have a saddle because we'll be going concave up in one direction and concave down in the other. To see that the second derivatives test is inconclusive when the discriminant is zero, I encourage you to try plotting on some graphing software graphs of 
f of xy equals x to the fourth minus y to the fourth, g of xy equals x to the fourth plus y to the fourth, and h of xy equals x negative x to the fourth minus y to the fourth. You can check that the discriminant at the point 0, 0 is 0 for all three of these functions, yet one of them has a saddle, one has a local minimum, and one has a local maximum. As a final comment, I want to point out that if you look through all of these cases carefully, you'll see there's one case that's missing. What about the situation when the discriminant is positive, but f sub xx is equal to 0? Well, if you look at the expression for the discriminant, that case is not possible. If f sub xx is equal to 0, then the discriminant has to be either negative or 0. So we really have considered all the cases. Now let's use the second derivatives test in an example. To find the local maxes and mins for this function, we first need to find the critical points, since maxes and mins can only occur at critical points. To find the critical points, we take the partial derivatives, f sub x is equal to 2x plus 2xy, and f sub y is equal to 2y plus x squared. We set those equal to 0 and solve the system of equations for x and y. The first equation can be factored to give 0 equals 2x times 1 plus y, so we know that either x is 0 or y is negative 1. Plugging those values into the second equation, if x is 0, then y has to be 0 also, so that gives us one critical point. If y is negative 1, then 0 equals negative 2 plus x squared means that x squared is 2, so x is plus or minus the square root of 2. That gives us two critical points. So the critical points are the points 0, 0, square root of 2, negative 1, and negative square root of 2, negative 1. Notice that there are no places where f sub x or f sub y do not exist, so this is all of our critical points. Now for each critical point, we need to decide if it's a local max, a local min, a saddle, or maybe none of the above. That's where the second derivatives test is helpful. To apply the second derivatives test, we need to find the discriminant. So we need to find the second partials. f sub xx is going to be 2 plus 2y. f sub xy and f sub yx are both going to be 2x, and f sub yy is going to be 2. We find the discriminant by taking the determinant of f sub xx, f sub xy, f sub yx, f sub yy. So that's the determinant of this expression which is equal to 4 plus 4y minus 4x squared. Now at the first critical point, the discriminant at 0, 0 is equal to 4. That's positive, and f sub xx at 0, 0 is 2, so that's also positive. So that means we're in the local min situation. At the next critical point, square root of 2, negative 1, the discriminant, by plugging in, I get 4 minus 4 minus 4 times 2. So that's equal to negative 8, which is less than 0, so we have a saddle. And finally, at the third critical point, the square, negative square root of 2, negative 1, we get, again, negative 8, so we have another saddle. The second derivatives test uses the discriminant to help determine the features of a graph at critical points according to the following rules. If the discriminant is positive and f sub xx is positive at the critical point, then we have a local min. If the discriminant is positive and f sub xx is negative at the critical point, then we have a local max. If the discriminant is less than 0, then we have a saddle. And if the discriminant is equal to 0, then the test is inconclusive.